Chair recognizes Mr. McGonagall of Everett. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and through you to the members. I come from a very different background than most of you. I've never saw House Chamber until I was elected. And Mr. Speaker, I've never told you this, but I actually had to take the State House tour to find out where your office was. <laughs> and that's the truth. But Mr. Speaker, when I first walked into this chamber, two things struck me. Number one, I hope that my mom and dad are proud of me. And number two, I hope that I can live up to the legacy of Speaker Kavarian, Representative Conley, and those before them, and earn the trust and the confidence that the people of Everett have placed in me. When we met, Mr. Speaker, I was overwhelmed, but you made me feel welcome and gave me confidence. You gave me advice and offered kind words that I am forever grateful for. I would like to thank the gentleman from Brighton, our housing chair, for his guidance, his advice, and giving me the opportunity to address you as vice chair and speak to you on such an important piece of legislation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't have my glasses, Mr. Chair. Mr. Speaker, I think he's hiding on me. I think he's hiding on me. I'm glad you know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough audience. But anyways. So. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, since my first day in office, the most important issue I have faced in Everett is housing. And this housing bond bill is one of the most impactful pieces of legislation for my city and the Commonwealth right now. In Everett, we are doing everything we can to provide housing, specifically affordable housing. But we can't do it alone because of the high costs of acquisition, construction, and the difficulty of financing affordable developments. We need funded state initiatives with federal incentives in order to get these projects built. Mr. Speaker, I recently returned from a trip to Haiti came back last Sunday. Each year I travel there with Reverend Mimi and Pastor Paul. We bring school supplies, donated clothes, and even wedding dresses so families can dress up and celebrate one of the most important days that families share. We're in the process of building a bread factory, something so many of us take for granted. And I have witnessed tens of thousands of men, women, and children living with very little shelter or no shelter at all. And Mr. Speaker, I relate this to our own work here in Massachusetts because so many families are struggling to make ends meet and afford a stable place to live a place to call home, and shelter is one of the most basic needs for human beings. We hear charity begins at home, home is where the heart is, home sweet home, they're cliches, but they are true nonetheless. We hear these statistics, even earlier today, 
from both chairmen and studies calling for the need for affordable housing. Massachusetts' third most expensive housing market in the country. Massachusetts' large housing, housing shortage. In Massachusetts, the lack of housing will create a drag in our economy. They're all true. But I, I choose to simplify things and look at issues with common sense. Because home is the heart and soul of the family, whether it's a house, condo, or apartment, whether occupied by a senior citizen, an empty nester, a veteran, a growing family, or an immigrant from Haiti, everyone deserves a roof over their head, and we must act. This housing bond bill contains so many opportunities to help our communities build the kind of housing stock we need to benefit all of our residents and continue to grow our economy. And ladies and gentlemen, this bill takes a giant step in turning someone should do something about this into someone is doing something about this. So that, Mr. Speaker, is why I rise in support of this bill. And I ask my colleagues to join me in doing something that makes having a roof over your head and a place to call home affordable, attainable, in a reality for all. Thank you. Oh,